Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and today we're presenting a national story featuring special guest Carolyn Hasna, the Senior Director of Marketing and Distribution for White Lodging. White Lodging is the fastest growing hotel ownership, development, and management company in America and has over 12,000 associates company-wide. Today, Carolyn will be talking with us about the company's first official advocacy group, WL Women. Carolyn, it's great to talk with you this morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much. All right, so first off, I want to know a little bit about you, what you do, and tell us a little bit about the company. So I am a senior corporate director of marketing, which essentially just means that I handle all of paid, earned, and owned media for a select portfolio of hotels within an organization. So I work with um, the entire revenue generation sales and marketing team. And then I have uh, about three women on my team um, at the corporate office in our headquarters that work directly within digital marketing. Um, you gave a great intro for White Lodging, and I'll just add on that, you know, we are one of the most um, innovative, I think, um, and fastest growing hotel management companies. We have about 165 hotels that we either own or manage um, across 19 brands. So um, very busy. <laughs> and um, I think, you know, part of my story, too, that adds to White Lodging Women is that I grew up in um, in this, uh, in this uh, department. So when I came in, it was newly created and I was a manager and I went to senior manager, um, director to senior director. So I've been at all different levels of the organization and have a really fast pace and um, amazing career path. And I think that kind of has helped um, launch White Lodging Women and the success that I've had um, to have that organic growth and then the fully sanctioned um, uh, approval for the for the group because I've kind of grown up at all different levels. So I think that definitely has helped. Great. So the program sounds like it's really an impactful project. Um, so tell us a little bit about how it's structured and share some of the goals of WL Women. Well, like Women of Denver, I mean, we just I wanted to create a space of connection. Um, and part of that also was just to have a conversation. So I think it's really important that you just create a safe space um, for women to come. And I didn't care if it was one other person or if it was a group of other women, um, very happy that it ended up at our launch event this month to be a hundred people in our organization um, talking about this. Because I feel that you at least, you know, I thought to myself a year ago, so it was January of 2015, that I just wanted to understand if, if anyone else was feeling the way I was feeling, if anyone else was craving mentorship, sponsorship, connection. Um, and I wanted to get in a, in a safe place to have that dialogue. Um, so the goal was really just to start the conversation. Um, the structure kind of formed around that. Um, I invited 12 women um, and it was a lean in circle, which I think was a great start for that. Um, and they have a, a great lean in circles.org is a, is a great kind of toolkit. They give you guides, they you know, give you exercises to facilitate conversation. So that really kind of helped take out some of the anxiety of well, what are we going to do? What are we going to talk about? Mm -hmm. um, and I invited 12 women and some of them I knew they were colleagues. I, they, their offices were near mine. And some of them were just women that I wanted to get to know better. And I kind of sent the invite out <laughs> over and, um, over a lunch break um, within the corporate office and just said, come talk to me. And they showed up and they continued to show up. So the structure has been um, every 30 days we meet mm -hmm. and we um, talk about more personal development. You know, we have different discussion leaders. We have um, someone that wanted to talk about salary negotiation. Um, we had someone talk about PERMA, about positive psychology. Um, we had someone who watched a cool TED talk and, you know, had questions and wanted to, you know, um, talk about the topic. And so kind of just more so around personal development was the initial start. Um, and then we kind of had sprinkled in some different events. Um, and then we really just started then focusing on our launch event that happened again this, this month. Um, so that's the, the main structure, I would say. Okay. Sounds amazing. So... I know personally that I've started these types of 
the programs within the corporate environment before, and it can be really hard to get buy-in. Um, and I know other people that have struggled with the same thing and trying to keep that momentum um, for the program for the long haul. So how do you plan to keep the energy going um, so that the program continues? Well, that's, um, <laughs> it's a hope. Um, but I, I think that um, your momentum is predicated on the start. And so I knew within my company, as you mentioned, it can be hard to kind of gain um, momentum, credibility, and again, to get it sanctioned by senior leadership. And so I knew um, to get it started, it had to not just be an idea and not just a passion project. I had to really kind of work to crystallize what this was. And I had to have you know, a roadmap. And I knew I needed to have a manifesto. And I knew we needed to have even down to a logo and some marketing pieces. Yeah. So it wasn't just, hey, I, I, we get together and we talk about stuff. Um, you know, I, it kind of created almost a business plan or a purpose doc. And so um, I think then that when you present that to leadership, it wasn't, it was like, oh, wow, like this, you have a following, you have all these things, you have a roadmap and this plan, a mission statement. Um, so I think the momentum help is going to be helped by the fact that we started with kind of a, a baked idea or this, this, you know, off the shelf kind of, we have this advocacy group now, please <laughs> give us your blessing. Um, so again, I think momentum is predicated on the start, which, um, was good for us. And then also, you know, the kind of cool organic thing that's happened from this is a lot of the, I've seen, um, within the group. A lot of self selectors, a lot of people that have raised their hands and said, I want to do that or I want to lead this discussion. Um, and I feel that when you give people space to have their own voice and to have their own authority and to be a leader, um, that creates this really cool energy. And again, because we're the first advocacy group, we're kind of the first space that our our company has has given for us to have this voice. And I feel like there's a really cool energy to that. And um, I know to your point that, you know, that you need something to continue that, but there's just so much excitement around it right now um, mm -hmm. that, and we're only building upon that, that um, I think that'll help with the group and help grow the group um, and help kind of to expand the group. Because it also, you know, we're looking not just at the corporate chapter, but because we have hotels across the United States, you know, we're looking to eventually expand it out to mar major markets where we have a lot of hotels. So, you know, white lodging women in Austin, white lodging women in Indianapolis, white lodging women in Chicago. So um, only cool stuff um, with our expansion ideas. Sounds amazing. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, just getting started off. It made me think about my, I have a cousin who plays professional baseball and his whole thing that we always kind of quote at home is quality starts. So if he has a bad game, it's, you know, sometimes it's just neither here nor there. You try your best and you have a quality start. And that's pretty much his philosophy. So it's kind of become one of our household philosophies is, okay, did you have a quality start? That's the, you know, that's you doing the best you can. And then it goes from there. And is, if you give it a great start, then usually you're going to be successful. Yeah, and I think it was scary when you talk about, you know, how do you start a, a, your, a company's first ever advocacy group? Um, and that it can be daunting when you just, you know, isolate to that one question. Um, the quality start, I think, also is defined by the culture in, you, in which you exist. So in your, in your example, what did that team look like? And mm -hmm. um, I had to really understand what the culture was at our company to have that quality start, to understand, okay, where do I need to enter and with what tools and resources and pieces to really help, again, crystallize that it wasn't just this idea of women getting together um, once a month to talk about stuff. Um, so I like that. It's a good philosophy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you have an advice, any advice for companies that, or anyone in a company in a position like yours, um, for the company as a whole, or for someone that wants to go and create a program like this, you know, what would be that first starting piece of advice for them and getting something going? I always go back to just, there needs to be a spark. And a lot of times, you know, we feel that if we work within, and I'm gonna take the lens of course of, the, of, the, of a corporate culture and how I created that spark. 
um, sometimes you kind of feel when you come in that you should just be giving these resources and there should be these diversity diversity groups and our company should give you opportunities for employee networking. But if there's not those things, then just be brave enough to say, I want those things and I'm just going to start. I'm going to, you know, create a little spark and see and just see and how it, how this has gained momentum has been a really, really cool thing to see. Um, and I just said, I need it. And there's got to be other women that need it too. Um, so I think my first advice is be brave and just put your neck out there. Um, and I also would say that it was really important for, for, for my company to, to understand the culture. I keep going back to that. Um, and, and address and come to, um, when you're advocating for this, to understand what those pieces are that your executive committee would need. Um, again, I go back to, I needed to have the manifesto. I needed to have the roadmap. I needed to figure out what budget I might want to ask for. And all those things kind of help legitimize the ask. Um, so I would say, light this, you know, light, light a match, see the, see the spark grow. Um, and then, you know, always focus on your main goal, which is that, that conversation or that dialogue, that personal empowerment, um, that connect, that connectivity. And then also, um, you know, what are the things to help legitimize along the way and have a really good plan? Um, so that would be my, my, uh, my advice. Okay, great. So, um, we are Women of Denver, and one of our goals is to help women build the skills, the confidence, and the influence to demand a higher pay rate. So I want to know if you have any advice for the ladies of Women of Denver to help them succeed in being financially successful in the workplace. So I'm going to go back to, for our launch event, we had Victoria Butson, who was the founding executive director for um, Women in Public Policy at Harvard. She is dynamite. And I can't believe we got her to our launch event in our co corporate headquarters in Indiana. Um, but she came and she, um, I hadn't heard of this before, um, but she mentioned the, the idea around the glass cliff. And basically that women are more often appointed to leadership roles under um, circumstances that are more risky or hard. So mm -hmm. the, the example of Marissa Mayer at Yahoo, um, the way that she got to be the CEO was you know, was Yahoo in a good position as a company um, when she was offered that? And I think it all made sense. Like the, when she said it, I go, wow, the glass cliff, not just the glass ceiling. And I think that to support that, when, when women finally get those leadership roles or they're asked to take on those roles, we're just so excited to get it um, that we often forget to also ask or negotiate for the resources to help support it. So what does my team look like? What does my budget look like? Um, what are what are the defined goals? Do you have a roadmap for me to get there? And when I get there and it doesn't work, what's plan B or how are we going to pivot um, to kind of set set me up for success? Yeah. And I feel um, that's important professionally, which then leads to financially. And I feel again, the advice would be that if you are in a leadership role, you're appointed into a leadership role, is to be able to have that narrative for yourself and be able to, again, be strong and brave to say, well, here's what I need to get there. You can't just put me out on a cliff um, and hope that I'm gonna survive just because I've been appointed. Um, so I thought that was really impactful and I, it took away a lot from that theory. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Setting yourself up, so empowering yourself to set yourself up for success. So yeah, and I think too, I, I, I've been a victim of that. You know, As I've um, mentioned in my, I've had a wonderful career path at my company. Um, and, you know, getting into senior roles, I've been, you know, when I've been offered those and, and promoted, I almost had the thing of like, really, you, you want me to be a senior director? And, you know, then it was, I honestly didn't think to ask, well, what does that mean? And what are the resources? And what are the touch points? And what are the defined goals? And all those things materialize over time and you, you strengthen your relationship with your direct report. Um, but it wasn't an initial ask in my interviews um, as I as I've grown and, and um, navigated my career path. And I thought move, now moving forward, I need to understand those things because um, I only will be successful and continue to advance um, knowing that I have the support and the resources to activate, you know. Uh, so 
I'm trying to, to eliminate options for the glass cliff <laughs> moving forward. Beautiful. So finally, I want to know, what are you looking forward to in your personal life right now? Oh, man, this is a good question. Um, I've been focusing a lot, admittedly, a lot of time and effort um, in my, my professional space. So, um, so I, I think I would probably say um, I rented a tiny house um, this oh. summer. <laughs> I'm on the tiny house nation crave. Um, and I just think me and some friends are going to spend some good weekends just kind of bohoing it out, setting a good vibe and, and kind of admittedly shifting from my professional into my personal and sometimes you need to get out of your space, albeit I'm going to a smaller space. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, I kind of had this idea and, um, so looking forward to a fun summer in a, in a tiny house. <laughs> oh, that's such a fun idea. I love that. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> All right. Well, I wish you much success with your tiny house. <laughs> and, you know, thank you so much for spending time chatting with me and sharing um, a little bit about your WL um, Women uh, Leadership Program for my audience. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a Thanks. great one. <laughs>